Hello, today we are on chapter 14 of the Elements of Brie. The journey begins. The next morning, Brie finished tying the boots that Shen had given her and felt as prepared as she could be for her first full day in goal. Her old clothing from Passerelle would not work, so the fairies had hemmed up some fabric that would fit her and look natural for the region. It was a darker brown two-piece outfit with longer top. She was given brown boots and gloves, which also included firm forearm colors. The jacket was warm and not only had a hood, but an extra attachment that covered her shoulders for more protection. A large leather belt wrapped around her hips and ended at a hip pouch. The fairies had shown her that pieces of it could be removed to help cool her body off if she went to somewhere warmer, but this was the perfect outfit for being in the mountains. Blades had taken off her backpack so she could retrieve the scroll, scroll out of it and her slingshot. She put the weapon on her forearm and adjusted it so it wouldn't bother her as she walked, but could easily be used if she needed to hunt or fight. The flashlight was gone and probably buried deep in the snow in the forest. She would not go back for it. She exited the room she was in to see Blaze lying on the ground in the, in the front of the door. He wagged his tail and went into a stretch before standing upright. You look ready to journey, he commented. I feel ready. She made her way through the couple of rooms until she entered the dining room where she had eaten earlier. She placed some fruit, bread, and the map that Shen had given her into the backpack and exited to the hallway. When she got to the end where the abandoned temple was, she could see the werebear's body was gone. Standing near the front of the temple where Bree had run along the wall was Shen and a few fairies, including Odiana. She approached them and smiled. I'm ready, she said, and then looked to Blaze. Well, we're ready. Blaze nodded and looked to Shen. Almost ready, he corrected, holding out a bag. When I found you, when I found out you had a slingshot, I got as many larger stones as I could, as I could, that could, uh, it would be easy for you to, sh to carry. Bree took the bag and looked inside. It was full of stones that were palm-sized, some with jagged points on them. She thanked Shen and dropped them into her hip pouch. She then looked up and saw that he had a second bag. These are from the werebear. She took the bag and heard it jingle. She opened it and there were a mix of coins and some small reddish gold chunks about the size of her thumb that seemed to shine in the light. She pulled out one of the chunks and was fascinated at how light it felt. They are called Rosarum. She, Shen continued. Some merchants trade for them as they would for coin or jewels. Bree put the chunk back in the bag and then went to put the whole bag in her hip pouch. Wait, how will I fit all these in the hip pouch? It's too small. Odiana made a noise and Bree could make out the word enchanted. She's right, Shen said. The fairies enchanted that hip pouch so the inside is larger than the outside. She took the bag from her hand. He took the bag from her hand, opened the pouch and dropped it inside. After it vanished, she slowly placed her hand in, lowering it down until most of her arm was inside. She chuckled and took her arm back out. Magic, she commented, to which both Shen and Odiana nodded. Is my backpack enchanted as well? We didn't think that necessary, as you may need to carry many things in your hip pouch for quick access, rather than your backpack. Bree nodded. Speaking of magic, back in Passerelle, when my aunt and I killed some monsters that ended up there... There's a pile of dust left behind with a sparkle like this Rosarum stuff. Is that a type of magic? Shen nodded. In a way. Rosarum cannot exist in your world, only in Gol. If you destroy a monster here, it'll probably leave behind some pieces of Rosarum. If you ever find the ether, you may see a similar color there as well. The merchants that like Rosarum say that it contains great energy. Odiana began fluttering and chirping quickly. Bree finally understood her completely, and not just a random word. You're coming with me too, she asked, to which Odiana nodded. Excellent. I think a fairy would be a great addition to this journey. You remember how to get to the Temple of the Aether? Shen asked as they walked to the entrance of the temple, the door still broken from Blaze and the Werebear's entrance. Go west for a day and then north through the marked mountain path, she said, repeating Shen's directions from yesterday when he showed her the map. Bree thanked Shen and then looked to Odiana and Blaze. Shall we go? Blaze barked in reply, and Odiana fluttered her wings, making a tingling noise. Bree chuckled in response as she led them both out the door to begin their journey. Have a great day.